Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Mike Armstrong podcast show. And uh, this uh, this evening or uh, afternoon stateside, we're joined by uh, Swampy. And uh, he is uh, an eco speaker and a campaigner based out of uh, Louisville in Kentucky, USA. Um, so uh, how are you doing today, Swampy? Pretty good. Pretty good, Mike. The Welsh Dragon doing well. We've, yeah. uh, of course, friends in Clubhouse, so doing real well. Thanks for asking. Yeah, well, uh, yes, we've been, uh, you know, pretty much seeing each other multiple times per day for the last at least five weeks now. And uh, we've obviously got to know each other really, really well. And uh, I know that uh, you're a very interesting character, very unique, and uh, what you're doing is uh, is fantastic. And I think... Uh, it's going to be great to showcase what you're doing to my audience, uh, my listeners and my YouTube watchers. And so they can get to see how wonderful you are and all the great things that you're doing. So uh, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, well, thanks so much. I uh, look forward to sharing folks uh, about what's going on with me. And uh, I've got a uh, recently wrote a book and I've got a campaign in action. And I, I look forward to sharing that with all your listeners. Yeah, brilliant. So, um, so Swampy, you're a character, yeah? Uh, you're a character aimed at trying to help um, children and, and the world, really, understand, uh, you know, climate change and, and the environment and all that sort of thing. Tell everyone a little bit about, um, about your story, about, you know, your, your history and how uh, the Swampy character came to life, really. Yeah, let me share that with you because it's really quite a hoot. Um, I went out with the place where I was working, we were allowed to dress up. So I was involved, got my degree in forestry at the University of Kentucky. And uh, so I'm like, I've learned the hardwoods, the trees, and I saw these weeds. I'm like, I wanted to find out about the weeds. And I got involved with a discussion of what are called wetlands. And wetlands are really types of in between water and uplands that involve the water gradient uh, with a fluctuating water table. Sometimes plants can grow in the absence of uh, oxygen, that's called anaerobic. And then other plants, uplands are above. So it's kind of a transitional area along a gradient, but Swampy is a character that I created. I regulated the coal industry for Kentucky and I got involved with the geology, the hydrology, the botany, uh, and the zoology aspects in the science area. So I came with character. Swampy is an acronym. Soils are brown. The W is for waters, which is blue. The A is for our animals. And that's got kind of like a red for a lifeblood indicator. M is for mankind, womankind. And back like land use, and how the wetlands and the lands and the waters are used. And then P is green for the plants and Y is for you, which is yellow. So uh, I actually created a costume for Halloween, uh, blue in the middle for water. Then I had the brown on the outside for soils and the green for the vegetation. I got on rollerblades, Mike. Uh, I had a music box underneath it that played swampy songs. And then I had like animals voices coming out different types of animals okay and turned up the volume and the kids could really resonate as far as a living wetland in there and I got on rollerblades and I had a swampy face and I had a swampy stick and somebody said that was so good at Halloween they said why don't you take that on the road so I've had a lot of fun stories Mike since 1995 it's been about 21 years so yeah I love reaching out sharing and bringing the wetlands to the people. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. And um, and obviously, um, like it's like we were talking about, we we've been uh, um, speaking a long time now on Clubhouse. And there's not many people you meet who's you know into that sort of thing on Cl Clubhouse. You know, into the environment, into you know wetlands and and the animals and all that sort of thing. You know, I, I guess obviously there's a lot of people who are into I think we call it zoology is it animals and stuff and there's a lot of environmental exactly, stuff yeah. there, are, mm -hmm. there are you know there are plenty of people who are into those sort of spaces it's not so many on clubhouse uh, at the moment and I think I did introduce or I spoke to somebody who was into the um the oceans he was an ocean um 
conservative or you know look, trying to look after the oceans and stuff that's probably the only other person i've met on clubhouse other than yourself into that sort of uh, uh sort of uh side of things if you like the other you know, the environmentalist and the and, and all of that and i know you're passionate about um like earth day and about uh, you know lots of other courses as well you got a not for profit and all of that so so the character's been around for a long time and uh, 20 odd years you've been having great uh, fun um, but what are the some of, some of the sort of um, campaigns and the topics you're looking to sort of like uh, educate people about and uh, and that as the character what what are the things you're involved in yeah thanks mike for asking me that question uh, recently, probably about four months ago, I started my nonprofit, and uh, I already had a company called Planet Swampy LLC, but I wanted to start a nonprofit again. It's Swampy and it's Inc. And uh, so my major focus, again, is supplying clean water. And I'll give you an example of that in just a minute and uh, saving, uh, protecting valuable wetlands. A lot of people think that those areas are wastelands, but really, we're finding out how valuable they really are. When we lose them, uh, it's tough to compensate. And the third area, Mike, is involved with the uh, Earth Day. I've done several different projects for Earth Day. Two years ago, I did a uh, podcast every week. I'd cover a different subject. Uh, the first week might be about the history of environmental protection. The second week would involve uh, carbon, climate, and forestry. And we had gr uh, really great speakers on there. Uh, nationally about those topics. The next week may have been clean water and wetlands. We had Bill Mish, one of the leaders inter internationally on wetlands. And then we had five more additional topics every week, everything from natural disasters to uh, plastics in the ocean to our rainforest destruction. Then the next year I did a Earth Day uh, Zoom celebrating the 50th anniversary last year of Earth Day. And was able to uh, chime in with a great group, uh, creativemornings.org. So, uh, yeah, a couple campaigns. I uh, wrote my book, Mike. I'm trying to leverage that for a TV show for kids. Uh, I grew up in the, the age when they had something called Captain Kangaroo. And he had his sidekicks, Dancing Bear, Mr. Green Jeans, and Tom Terrific, right? So I've got the same thing. I've got characters. And I'm excited about leveraging that uh, because kids don't really have shows where kids can be kids so again again a couple a couple different areas mike and that's uh, an outreach yeah definitely so uh so you're busy you're a busy man i'm a busy man too so i know what it's like and uh you know you, you've got your um fingers in a lot of pies if you like you're involved in a lot of things how do you um how do you manage to keep uh, all of it going i suppose you know, enthusiasm is is part of it but uh you know obviously i guess you've learned a lot along the way as well yeah, you know, I have, Mike, I've been doing this for a long time. I do everything myself. I'm looking forward to the nonprofit to actually share of some responsibilities of some helpers. Uh, but yeah, I've been doing this. I give interviews involving about the environment. I can tell you that about 15 years ago, I was in competition with Bill Nye, the science guy, to do a live uh, webinar with 500 schools in the U.S., with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in California. And Bill and I both lost out to the electronic heron. So uh, yeah, it's been nice. Plus I went on a cruise one time and I mentioned Swampy and they'd heard of Swampy. So I feel like it's a passionate thing. Uh, also, Mike, I've got a compelling personal story as well uh, that has uh, jettisoned me, okay, to the urgency of wanting to have this outreach. So I wanted to just share that with you. Yeah, yeah. Well, tell us, tell us your personal story because I've heard it before, but obviously for the um, for the listeners and the audience, they haven't heard it before. So tell us a little bit about your, yeah. your personal story and what drives you on. Yeah, it's a little bit unusual. I grew up one of, at one one year old. My father uh, passed away, and then at twelve, my mother passed away. I was the youngest of four. And at that point, I went into what's called, an, you know, an orphanage in Louisville, Kentucky. And it was an institution much different than a natural home. And uh, so I was there for six years. I graduated, waited from there. Uh, didn't really have a father, didn't really have a mentor, kind of a lone wolf, okay? But was able to uh, go to school 
and end up again at the University of Kentucky getting a degree in forestry uh, and the bachelor's of science program. So at that point, Mike, I uh, worked around a couple of different jobs, always trying to stay involved in forestry and the environment. I was a nature sanctuary manager. I worked for the US Forest Service. I worked for FEMA, uh, was an urban planner for the Lexington Fayette Urban County government. And uh, later on, I, uh, I was married for 28 years, had two great kids. But later on in 1997, Mike, I had a very serious automobile accident. Uh, I was hit head on by a rock truck, a 41 ton rock truck. And they said the airbag actually saved my life. Had seven different surgeries and uh, survived those. And it was like uh, interesting because something were between faith and science, uh, I really believe in the scientific method. So I uh, was able to recuperate from that, but it really changed uh, my uh, outlook on life as life became more urgent. And I felt like, you know, I have created this entire journey involving the environment, including the 1970s, which was the, uh, the years when we had the uh, Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, et cetera, some other ones. So it became more pronounced, uh, more, uh, more urgent for me. And uh, I've added upon that. And um, again, meeting people, networking, giving speeches. I've got an online site. Uh, I'm on Instagram. I've got a link tree. Um, and uh, so I'm just trying to connect with folks uh, in the environment, also education. Uh, you, the, my listener, listeners may have heard of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, the other program is uh, using the A, making it STEAM for the arts. And I have an education program called STREAM. And the R adds for reading, writing, and English, three areas needed uh, before the, the kids take their ACT before college. So yeah, just a couple of different projects. I am looking for partnerships and sponsors, Mike. And that's the reason I'm enjoying Clubhouse so much. Yeah, what sort of people do you think would make good partners and good sponsors and collaborators for you in the not-for-profit and, and everything else you're doing? What sort of people would you love, you know, maybe to listen to this and reach out to you? Yeah, it's just, uh, there's just several different directions, uh, whether it's educational, uh, as far as I'm working on a curriculum. Uh, in the old days, I would tell people about Swampy, but I've actually changed that. I want to see what the... the uh, the educational curricul curriculum, whatever they're doing with their schools and matching my curriculum to theirs. And so, yeah, I'm like Clubhouse, Facebook. My big uh, social media platform is Twitter. I've got like over 4,000 followers in my five diff different Twitter accounts. Uh, I should also share with you guys that I'm a film producer. I'm an executive producer of an 18-minute animated movie called The Hydric Zone, okay? And uh, so, yeah, just basically connecting like with film producers, writers, Mike, I wrote my, my book. I've got three other books in, in the uh, pipeline and uh, education with STEM uh, and then motivational people, uh, people like yourselves and speakers. Uh, and then, of course, mental wellness uh, as well as, as that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully there'll be some um, some people listening and wanting to get involved. I guess other other sort of um, environmentalists and and um, climate change people as well would be you know good people for you to connect with and reach out to because they could maybe maybe collaborate with you on um, some of the events you're doing for Earth Day and that sort of thing. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm already reaching out. I'm going to try to maybe have my own. Uh, club clubhouse uh in in here later i know we're both looking at that uh, but as you can see behind me it's all about the waters and the soils and the plants and uh yes the majority of the folks on clubhouse they're talking about uh climate change which uh that's interesting i get involved with in uh permitting okay when somebody mines coal they take out so much overburden and then once they remove the coal seam uh maybe two to four four feet they have to put all the overburden back. And in doing so, it has to be engineered a certain way so it doesn't slide down the hill. And then around that, they've got to divert the water off that. So a lot of engineering. Uh, but yeah, somebody wants to actually drill down, Mike, vertically. 
they go through all the different strat, hit the cold seam, they have to take that off. And then you also have to watch out for the waters, groundwater, and then also the surface waters. And then uh, sometimes uh, chemically, some of the different stratas can react adversely in the presence of oxygen and water, H2O and O2, and it can actually generate acid mine drainage and sediment into streams that may have endangered species. So uh, throughout all the entire process, I'm very blessed to have gotten into that. And I wanna share that with folks uh, in an understanding way and whatever capacity that they're involved with. Yeah, definitely. And um, does that, um, obviously you were involved in the mining side of things and that's where a lot of your, uh, I guess, uh, knowledge expanded, you know, when you when you got into that from the forestry degree, I suppose, that would have got you into into lots more areas of, 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 of you know, uh, you know, understanding, uh, you know, the uh, geometries and the, and the biologies and the chemistries and all, all the different things you would have been involved in in mining. Is there much mining still going on in uh, Kentucky or or in the US in, in general? You know, it's been con uh, curtailed at a great rate. And uh, East, there's actually, Kentucky has two different uh, uh, coal uh, formations, okay? In the Eastern, we have the Illinois Basin Coals, and that runs in the mountains of uh, Appalachia, and Kentucky's kind of lower in the Southern areas. Those coals are known to have high BTUs, which are energy to burn, and lower sulfur level levels that will not uh, pollute the environment. And then Western Kentucky, we have the Illinois Basin coals, and that's more towards where um, Ohio, the Ohio River meets Mississippi. Uh, but most uh, areas are down tremendously. Uh, Kentucky receives about 80% of its energy from coal steel. And uh, I've got no, I know friends in the industry and uh, they're hurting right now as well as the communities. And I'm trying to uh, pitch back on a couple of different campaigns to provide jobs in those areas as well. So uh, yeah, renewables, other types of aspects, but, but it's been impacted obviously with uh, the Paris Accords and uh, the upcoming areas. I think the United States had more energy from renewables, which could be solar, uh, wind, uh, geothermal, hydroelectric resources, nuclear. So uh, it's changing. Uh, and I want us to invest in some of those and bring some of those uh, energies, resources in, uh, to Kentucky. Yeah, well, I guess, um, I was going to say, my guess is with your wide knowledge of all this stuff, that you would be a good consultant or something for people who were looking to get maybe into renewables and find out where to put them and, and all of that sort of stuff. My guess is you'd have some useful knowledge to help with some of those sectors when they want to get going. Exactly, Mike. And I was the uh, environmental department manager for a firm in Williamsburg, Virginia, and a lot of times what we are involved in is what's called the permitting process. If somebody wants to have a project, a lot of times they have to address, okay, the waters, the, uh, which is under the Clean Water Act, uh, usually overseen by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in association with the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency as well as state agencies. Then we look at fish and wildlife habitat, uh, which are the federal and state organizations and then a lot of times when they're mining, Mike, they, uh, they actually uh, can impact historical resources. So there's actually uh, a, bunch of, a bunch of regulation involved the National Historic Preservation Act. And then also I wanted to mention as well my outreach. Additionally, in natural disasters and uh, disaster relief. And I've worked for FEMA and also for state uh, Department of Homeland Securities. And yes, it's a rather elaborate uh, body of regulation called the Robert T. Stafford Act. And what that encompasses is for project specialists in disasters, like 2005, I was in Hurricane Wilma, to meet with folks, uh, the kickoff meetings, et cetera, and share with them their damages. And then we inventory that, and then we take pricing uh, on Excel spreadsheets, and we uh, submit that to, to the uh, the federal government, the states do, and they get assistance 
in order to repair their infrastructure. So that it's permitting for the environmental, historical, then also for natural disasters, as well as urban planning. I might add, might add that as well, Mike. So yes, uh, I'm glad to help folks out in that area. And I've got a lot of experience. And the main thing is in that when people wanna do projects, okay, that can impact the environment. A lot of the main thing is up front is getting the help and the regulations so they're not backed up later on having to wait for regulatory protocols, Mike. Yes. So it's entire, I do get involved with that as well. Yeah, I know, and I know you've written some books and that. Have you done a life story book or have you just done books on specific subjects? Uh, the main thing is I'm working a self-help uh, book right now, which will help people uh, in six different facets uh, organize their life. And two of those, okay, uh, one of them in the upper level, Mike, is white, which is well, however people get their power, okay, what the reach is. The opposite of white is black, uh, which is the business, the financial aspects. So somewhere between white and black. And I'm a big fan of astrophysicists. One of those was Sir Isaac Newton, and he's the one that actually uh, discussed, discovered all the different colors within a prism. So yeah, that's two different areas, Mike. I also grew up in the orphanage and I'm working on a book. Uh, I'm not sure if our listeners have ever heard of the song, My Old Kentucky Home, that sung right before the Kentucky Derby. So I'm writing a novel in the 60s when John F. Kennedy got shot, all the way through all the trials and tribulations that we had as a nation, all the way till where they landed a man in the moon in 69, and the name of this book is This New Kentucky Home, because it wasn't mine, it was just this, and it wasn't old, it was new. But uh, yeah, the different things that we did as orphanage uh, urchins to try to deal with our situation, and uh, that's one thing, Mike, as well as sci-fi, I'm also involved in, so far in five different episodes uh, in the hydro zone. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you know, like, like I said, you've had, you had a colourful interest in life. So I think if you was to write a good life story uh, of your life, because it's quite unique, it's in an area where, you know, like you say, you had a, the, the unusual start, if you like. And then you had, uh, you know, you had an interesting career, very diverse, very sort of expansive in all of the, you know, in an area where you don't get to read so much about um you know, people who've done things in your sector and, you know, that much diversity, et cetera. That I think it could be, it can make an interesting book, but also potentially an interesting life, you know, like a film or something like, you know. Exactly, yeah. Mike. And I'm what I have, haven't shared with your listeners yet is the, uh, the accident in 1997 with a 41 ton rock truck, okay and the different uh, ways of being that occurred in that. Uh, yeah, before, you do that as well, I, before, before you do that, I've heard about this accident a number of times. How do right. you, how do you like uh, take a 41 ton rock truck on? How, how do you have a head on collision with one of them? Was, was you in a car? <laughs> was you standing on the road? What, how, what, <laughs> what, what happened? No, you know, Mike, I was actually in a Toyota Corolla and uh, it was icy roads and they tried to dodge someone else, but they came over double yellow lines. So yeah, I came to uh, traveling home. It was cold in December. And uh, so yeah, I came to, I had the engine sitting in my lap. I looked over to the left, I had a compound fracture and there was glass everywhere. And I'm like, this is not a good thing. So I started talking to the responders and they thought that I was dead and I started them, okay? So anyway, different process is that where they use the jaws of life, Mike. When they flew me up in a helicopter, the University of Kentucky police, excuse me, uh, hospital folks, uh, the ambulance folks actually saved my life. And then I was in a hospital and I went in and out of consciousness. And I give talks about this uh, as well as the uh, the ecology, Mike, and uh, yeah, it's, it was very very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and obviously, you had to um, do some rehabilitation and all that as well, didn't you? You had to, uh, you know, 
what, what was what was that all? How long did all that take, and what did you have to do all together? Yeah, exactly, Mike. When I I broke three of my four limbs, and I had what's called mechanical pneumonia, and I could not hardly inhale or exhale. And my father-in-law said, "You need to try to breathe and get these." crystals into my lungs that would take out the water okay so I had mechanical pneumonia lying horizontal then later on I had to uh, learn how to walk again they did great surgery putting my left femur and tibia back together Uh, so I did that and then occupational therapy for the work and physical therapy uh, getting those joints together I can't tell you a funny story Mike I uh, went in one time and the doctor said, okay, I had a couple screws loose. So she said, uh, keep your, uh, keep your, <laughs> your legs still. So I kept my legs still, right? And then the next time I came back, it had atrophied, okay? I could not move my leg back and forth. And she said, you nut, you've got to start moving this leg or it's going to get stuck in place. And I said, well, you told me to keep it still, right? So anyway, <laughs> learned a lot of different things, Mike. One last thing is I want to encourage all of our audience. I learned how to swim, and it was low impact, and I learned how to flip turn and lap swim. And uh, very, very good, very therapeutic. Yeah, well, that's a good way of, um, of uh, phys- physioing after any uh, injury, you know, because it's uh, low impact. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yes, and also, um, I think you're um, you're looking to try and get a, a swampy cartoon or a TV series and all that sort of thing as well. So, uh, if anyone's out there, maybe with opportunities for that, I think uh, you know they should also reach out to you as well, shouldn't they? Yeah, they should. And uh, I'm on IMDb, and uh, I'm reaching out to folks. Uh, we had an animated movie, 18 minutes. And we want to take that and have actual actors uh, come forward. And we're now looking uh, with Tim Burton and Johnny Depp to actually uh, see if they would like, can get them on there. Uh, Johnny Depp is a Kentuckian, uh, as long as Ashley Judd and Jennifer Lawrence. So, uh, yeah, we're looking at doing that Uh, again. We want to have something for kids. We lost Mr. Rogers. And uh, so, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so I've asked you quite a bit uh, you know, from what I know of, of you and what I think uh, the listeners should know. Is there anything I've missed? Because I know you do so much that uh, I'm bound to have missed something. <laughs> you know, it's not, Mike. Uh, uh, I enjoy doing, taking interviews, meeting people. I just ask for you, if you ever uh, want to c- uh, contact me, uh, individually, my uh, just write to me. Uh, my email is swampy, S W A M P Y, at swampy.org or kentglade at swampy.org. And my websites are kentglade.com, swampy.org, Planet Swampy. Uh, I'm on Facebook there and Twitter at Planet Swampy. And main thing is just connecting. We all have some skills, and uh, I can help you out in a lot of areas as well. Uh, getting ready to revise the web page. And uh, so I'm also looking to help folks, uh, as, as you've done, Mike, in a big way on Clubhouse and the pitch for Clubhouse. It's been life-changing for me and connecting with people all around the world. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And didn't you say you had a link tree as well, which means if you give the link tree, then they can go there and then all the links are on there anyway, isn't they? So, right, link tree. Link uh, yeah, dash go swampy. And if you connect to that, uh, actually, it's what L I N K T R dot E E slash Go Swampy, and they'll have a place there for my book, for all my different web pages. And uh, the other thing, Mike, is we're looking at probably trying to get together and do a clubhouse Earth Day, April twenty second. And if we've got speakers involved uh, on wetlands, uh, climate, uh, education. Uh, natural disasters, etc. cetera. Uh, we're looking forward to reach out and discuss some of those things. And Clubhouse is a great uh, vessel in order to do that. Yeah. Have you done any rooms on that yet? Or I know you go in and speak on other rooms, but have you done any of your own rooms yet? 
No, I'm waiting to hear back from them. I've got a uh, a room that I that I put in for Planet Swampy. That's a club. Uh, that is, a lot isn't it? Of the, That's a club. A lot of the rooms, Mike, are, are for climate. Okay, but yeah, I want to incorporate obviously clean water and space. Yeah, spaces around the world. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I was thinking, like, um, maybe with Earth Day coming up soon, maybe it might be worthwhile you just doing an event say on a Saturday or something, so a room, just setting up a room and doing it for like three weeks or something as a um, as a recruitment tool for people who might want to collaborate with you on the Earth Day event, you know? So you do a, pre, a pre-Earth Day event event, asking people who are interested in, you know, climate change, wetlands, water, you know, ecology, uh, zoology, you know, et cetera. Um, exactly. asking, you know, do a room aimed at those people and then seeing, because because although I've only met you and the um, uh, the marine biologist, that's the only. Uh, have you spoken to the marine biologist? No, but I'm going to get his name from you. Uh, the, um, I'll definitely give him your name. I'm not sure if they're familiar with Clubhouse on Instagram, so we can uh, DM each other direct message. So I'll yeah, Mike, I'll go to that browse. Yeah, but I uh, I give him your name anyway. I'm surprised he didn't get in touch with you because he was interested in speaking to you. But he was a zoologist, uh, and, um, a marine biologist, um, and he's into, um, you know, uh, sustainability and all that sort of stuff. Right. Um, but the, the, it's only you and him really in that space that I've uh, that I've met. But I'm pretty sure there must be some other people in that space too on Clubhouse. So if you yeah. set up some rooms and uh, and did it for a few weeks prior to Earth Day, then I think you'll get, you know, maybe two, three, four other you know, similar like-minded people who can, you know, make that event then a, a bigger event like like the Mental Health Summit was with lots of different people from the mental health uh, sector who could all speak on different topics. You know, you could have a an Earth Day where, you know, maybe you had, you know, six people and you all could do two hours each or, you know, you could cover different aspects of of the Absolutely. environment and, and the earth and, and make it a, you know, a, a really good uh, event. But, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure you could do it on your own and it'd be a good event too. But, you know, the more the merrier, you, they all bring more people in and makes it a bigger event then, don't they? Yeah, and like you said, Mike, there's not, a, there's not a great deal of people specifically with clean water. There's a lot of folks in carbon and sustainability, like you're saying. Uh, I also wanted to share, uh, I've been meeting people in Africa I'm trying to uh, bring clean water to a 250 child orphanage in Western Uganda near Soroti. And uh, it's been great reaching out. One, one nonprofit, they have 1 million wells and the ideal uh, resources on Clubhouse. I'm uh, meeting people from Africa and Tanzania. And uh, also I've been working with people in the states uh with the native americans try to help, trying to help them out as well so yeah a couple of different outreaches yeah good well um yeah i think um i think we've covered everything that i can think of and you've uh, you've added in all your webs and all your links and everything so uh yeah. is there anything else you want to want to leave people with or are we done you know i think we're done again my uh, the main thing is the website to get my email address yeah. and uh link tree a little bit of that so yeah i think i'm good we said about everything and again yeah thanks for letting me share all that and uh that's what i appreciate a lot no problem at all and uh, thanks for coming on the podcast and we finally did it <laughs> you're both so busy <laughs> exactly <Mike. laughs> and again, thanks, for, thanks for holding space for our room and i'll of course help you out in that as well yeah, no problem. That, that, that's why it's always been quite hard to nail this down because usually when I'm shooting off, you're covering the room or, or whatever, <laughs> like you know, or or you're busy or I'm busy or whatever. But we finally done it. So uh, yeah, thanks very much for coming on the podcast, for sharing all your uh, information and your links and everything. And uh, I look forward to uh, next time you come on. Maybe we'll do a a review of Earth Day or or a plug for that or, or something once you know That'd what the great, lineup Mike. is and what the event's going to be. So uh, yeah, just have a great uh, day. Uh, I know I will, as I always do. And uh, thanks very much for listening to all my audience. And uh, you know, check out Swampy and everything he's doing. Get to that uh, website and that link tree and uh, check him out because I'm sure there's some great things uh, that you want to get involved in. 
Yeah, and if you're on Clubhouse, um, my my label is at Swampy. Most people have two names. Mine is just Swampy. Yeah, brilliant. There's only one Swampy, and there's only one name. <laughs> that's all you need. So, uh, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Have a great day, and uh, catch up with you on Clubhouse. All right, man. See you. Take care. Bye.